Hey there ladies and gents, welcome back to another Trove video and in this one I'm going to be showing you guys how to get to your first mastery rank milestones. So that's going to be rank 20 and rank 30 mastery. And the reason these are two very important ranks is because the golden thread in the top right corner of your screen is going to require you to hit these milestones to advance to the next end game quest lines. And let's not forget, once you hit Mastery Rank 30, the end game challenges do unlock for you and the, basically the game just kind of opens up. You're free to do what you like and uh, nothing's really holding you back or guiding you along. You're just, your imagination is the limit. Fantastic. So let's get started. The first thing to take a look at is how do you even take a look at your mastery? Well, easy. You press C. It opens up your character menu in the left right over here. If you take a look at the very top, underneath your character name, it's going to say Mastery Rank. Yours will most likely be 1, 2, 3, or 4, whatever it is. Then, we're going to take a look at this trophy icon right next to Mastery Rank. Once you click on that little icon, a yellow bar will show up along with a bunch of little things showing cubits, max health, formicite, laser mancy, and all these fancy things. Well. Those are going to be your Mastery Rank rewards. The little number to your left signifies what level you'll acquire this reward, and the blank circles actually will also be rewarded to you, but they're just going to be down the list. So this one is 2, the next one's going to be 3, 4, 5, so on, so forth. Well, how do we get these Mastery Ranks? Well, let's take a look. This yellow bar is how much EXP you have towards your next rank, and this will fill up at 100 Mastery Points. So, once we get 100 points, we'll automatically advance to the next level, the bar will reset, and we'll need to get another 100 mastery points in order to advance to the next level. How do we attain these, you say? Well, let's go ahead and press Y. It'll open up this little menu to your right, the Collections menu. And if we take a look in here, Styles is one of the options. Let's go ahead and click on Styles and take a look. There's some weapons in here, and if we hover over them, we can read a description, and at the very bottom of the description, we can actually see that you'll gain one mastery point for learning this style. To learn this style, though, you will just be playing the game, collecting loot, and once you collect a chipped sword style, you can go ahead and take it back to your loot collector, throw it in there, deconstruct it, get your flux, get your glim, and also collect the style. Now this is a one-off. You're only allowed to collect a style one time. You can constantly deconstruct the item over and over again if you find it. Duplicates will net you the same amount of flux and other rewards, except for that one mastery point. So every style is worth one mastery point, and you'll just collect these along the way. Eventually, you'll pick up about a hundred and get one level. This just happens as you play the game, so let's just put it in the back of our minds. Let's know that we'll be getting some mastery just for playing, and we're not completely out of luck. The next thing to take a look at is your mounts. There are two basic mounts that will drop for you throughout the game. The Pemblock and the Meowth. These two guys are really important because learning them will net you mastery as well. So let's take a look. In the Corgi menu, you've got the pen block, which gives you 50 mastery points. That's half an entire mastery level. That's freaking crazy, right? Well, yes. And it's even crazier because if you get duplicate pen blocks and duplicate meowths after you've learned them, you can actually take them to your crafting bench and make them into a different kind of pen block and a different kind of meowth. You can see that there's a second me uh, pen block, and there's a bunch of different cats as well. You can learn all of these guys, netting you 50 mastery points for each of these. That is a ton of extra mastery levels to help you get to your golden thread goal. Next, you'll be introduced to the fishing uh, profession line in your golden thread quest line. And I, I'm really sorry, I forgot to mention. I keep saying golden thread. That's going to be the gold quest line in the very top right corner of your screen. That is what most players in this game call the golden thread. You want to follow that until you are about mastery rank 20, 25, and then finish it off by hitting 30 and you're all set. So, once the Golden Thread introduces you to fishing, you can actually go ahead and keep on fishing. If you take a look in the fishing tab in your collections menu, learning the different fishing poles, or in this case crafting them, will net you about 20% of a mastery level. Then collecting the different fish in different water levels will also net you anywhere from 5 to 25 mastery points per fish. The rarer the fish, the more mastery points you collect. And this works out even better because 
all of these fish will give you some glim in return. You can usually just keep fishing and make the glim you're spending back. And if you do find a really rare fish that you've already learned, there's no point for you to learn it anymore, go ahead and sell it to another player. People will buy this stuff to learn mastery for themselves. So not only do you get some mastery, you get some money, and you get to basically just uh, have fun while you're playing the game. Learn a little bit, you can sit there, fish, go through the rest of the collections menu and see what else you might be interested in doing. Now, the next best way to get your mastery rank up is actually by buying another class with cubits I recommend and then leveling it up. Every level you get on a character will net you about 15 mastery points. And that's a ton of a ton of mastery points if you look at a multiple character lineup here. Every character's max uh, max level is 20. So you're looking at about what three mastery levels per character that is fantastic um the golden thread quest line will give you about enough cubits to pick up two to three extra characters if you pick those up along the way and start leveling them up just get them to 10 in the very beginning very easy to get to level 10 on a character you can do it in a couple hours that's easy one and a half mastery levels right there and you'll get a new you know character to play every now and then it'll keep the game fresh and exciting for you now, the last way to level up mastery that I would recommend for a brand new player is trying out the two easier to level professions. There are three really good professions in the game, but I would recommend working on gardening and ring crafting first. They're fairly cheap, fairly easy, and a new player can get into them very, very quickly with their basic crafting tables. The end tier crafting profession is rune crafting that takes a lot of resource and is very expensive it's meant for end game players and i would hold off on that until you are easily farming u4 or u5 adventure modes and challenges so once we've gotten that all cleared out of the way let me just give you guys a few little pointers on gardening and ring crafting while you're playing trove I would recommend going to the Peaceful Hills biome. It's that little biome with no enemies in it and sunflower towers as far as the eye can see. If you go ahead and pick up the sunflower bulbs on those towers, you're going to be well on your way to getting your gardening level up, and that just kind of put it in the back of your mind. If you're running across one of those biomes and catch a sunflower in the corner of your eye, just run on it quickly with your mount. Press Z, mount up, run on those little sunflowers, pick them up, you're good to go. Now, ring crafting, you might have to focus a little bit more on. That's why it's the second profession I'd recommend on the list, because it does take a fair amount of ore to accomplish leveling it, but it's very, very straightforward. You only need shapestone, some flux, and a couple couple of glim here and there to uh, level up ring crafting, but it will net you some crazy mastery. These professions will give you 75 mastery for every tier you level up. So for every 50 level points you get in a profession, you're going to get 75% of a mastery level. That is fantastic. That nets you about three and three quarters of a mastery um, mastery level every uh, every time you finish a profession. Not three and three quarters of a level. Three levels and three quarters of another level. So almost four levels for every profession you max out. Thanks guys for watching. I really hope this helps you finish your mastery 20 and 30 goals. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the description below or the comment section below and I will try to help you as best as I can. On a last leaving note, I will also throw in, if you do end up having a lot of glim, if you go the fishing route and other things, if you get a lot of glim, go to the ocean. Those That's the treasure isles biome and if you see a pirate ship, Waving a red or blue banner, that is a vendor. He's most likely going to be selling either boats or he's going to be selling um, boat-related equipment and or um, soul traps. What those soul traps do is they give you a little bit of an, they give you a little ally. Those allies will also net you anywhere from 5 to 50 mastery points. But that is a fairly expensive way to go about getting your mastery. I would put that on the back burner until you finished all of these other things in the list. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.